Often with humans, we talk about posture, but more often than not, we forget to talk about posture with our canine companions. So today we're gonna to touch on top line, what that is, how you can assess it, and why it's so important. So I'm Adam, this is Bo, let's dive in. So when we refer to a dog's posture, we're really referring to what's called their top line. This is looking at the area of their spine that goes from their shoulder blades, basically to the base of their tail. Now, different breeds have different styles of uh, top lines. Bo, for example, has a nice broad top line, nice and it's fairly flat. Uh, he's got nice big withers on him as well. However, certain dogs like a Whippet or a Greyhound are gonna be more arched in nature where they're tucked down in the back end. A dog like a German Shepherd is gonna be sloped where their back end is dropped. And then you have other dogs like a Lab that are gonna be more flat in nature, similar to Bo's here. Now, the top line shows normal function and it, it doesn't show you a, there's a specific injury or anything like that, but there can be key indications if the top line is out or if there's changes that there could be some uh, functional changes that are happening to the dog, quite possibly pain or limited uh, range of motion in certain joints. So a common type of deviation from normal posture is called roaching. So when the top line is roached, I'm gonna, it's gonna be arched like that. So when I compress bow in here, you can kind of see the mid back pop up. Now I'm obviously forcing him into that position. He's in he's kind of contorted right now, but uh, a dog that walks around with a roach mid back, so a humping in their mid back, is typically a sign that something is going on with the function and it's functioning poorly. So I've seen a bunch of dogs come to me with that in nature. They usually have a history of issues, but typically this is just a sign that you should be looking out for, saying that something is happening in the hind end. So why a dog will do this is typically they stiffen up, they tighten everything through their hip flexors and their psoas, I'll link a video up above where it shows you how to release the psoas in a dog. If you're seeing this, that could be step number one at home. However, there could be a lot of other things going on. So oftentimes you will wanna get this looked at, but a dog will do that because they'll shift their body weight forward, they'll take pressure off the back end, and typically they'll be able to walk around. Some dogs and certain breeds are really capable of doing this uh, very well and hiding the fact without roaching. So dogs like, uh, American, or sorry, English Bulldogs, for example, or French Bulldogs, they're so strong. I've seen them walk around where they're barely putting any weight on the hind end at all and hiding it very well while keeping a good top line. You have other dogs, uh, such as Boston Terriers, I've seen where they can hide it. They're a little longer through the, the spine, and what happens is they really arch to try to support that. Other signs and symptoms you'll typically see if this is more progressive, you're gonna see wasting of the muscles in the back legs. So typically there'll be atrophy, as typically disuse atrophy, is because they're shifting that weight forward. So when you're looking at your dog, it's best to understand what their top line should be for that breed specifically, what their individual top line is, so you can watch the changes over time, and then it can alert you if anything bad is happening. If you're unsure if they are in pain or not, this is typically a dead giveaway if they're walking around with that arch back hunch, hunch forward. So hope that helps. From here on out, I hope you guys check out the posture of your dog.